Okay, so your homework tonight is questions 5, 6 through 5, 11. And so 5, 6 is the one that matches the lesson. Um, the rest of them are all review. So um, you've got some interesting questions on 5, 7. We'll talk about those. Um, 5, 8, 5, 9, 5, 10, and 5, 11. So let's start with 5, 6. Um, Lenny and George from problem 5, 1 match the data. What if their data was these, this data? So mean that the growth of the rabbits multiplies like it did in problem 5, 1. Complete each of the following tables. Show your thinking give a, or give a brief explanation of how you know what the mystic entries are. So um, A is really straightforward. So I'm going to leave you to do A. B is a little trickier. And again, we're looking for something to multiply by. B is a little trickier because of the blank. So we're going to multiply by a number to get from 6 to 24, which of course is 4. But what number must I have used twice? And so I can fill in my blank. And so we're looking for a number we can times to get 4. And that's 2 and 2. So I must have times by 2, which would give me 12. And 12 times 2 is 24. And that's how you'll fill in your missing blank is with a multiplication of 2. And again, I'm going to leave you to do A. For B, I left you with one blank. No big deal. 457. Um, the equation line describes the relationship with x and y coordinates. If you want to look at the E tool, you certainly can. Um, it's kind of nice, but especially if you're having issues. Excuse me, plotting numbers are, you know, aren't really sure. It's good. 3, negative 1. 3, positive 2. 3, 4. Let's read what it says. State the coordinates of two more points that will be on this line. Oh, draw a line that passes through them. Excuse me. State the ordered pair of any point, two more points that will be on this line. And answer the question. So I need two points that are on the line. Then answer this question. What will be the true e coordinates of any other point on the line? So any other point on the line. Um, and... Now write an equation that says exactly the same thing. Do not worry if it's simple. So this one's a really straightforward. As you notice, all, what these all have in common is the y-intercept. is The x value is all three. So my two points that I'm going to add to this um, will both be three. And I can pick anything I want. So three comma whatever which leads to this last one, which is three comma X is what they're trying, excuse me, not three comma X, three comma Y, which is what they're trying to get at is that you're, it doesn't matter what point you pick, it's going to be X. And so my equation is X is three. It's very simple because this is a vertical line. B is very similar, except for it's going to be a horizontal line. And um, so they kind of just go in order with that. And what if I was on the y-axis, what would that equation be? So this is talking about horizontal and vertical line equations. Um, with horizontal and vertical line equations, horizontal is x equals, excuse me, vertical is x equals some value and horizontal is y equals some value. So keep that in mind that that's what you're looking for for your answers here. 58, what number is not part of the domain of the function? And we, our function is g of x equals x plus 2 over x minus 1. And how can you tell? And so basically with the domain, um, we're looking for a number, an x value that doesn't work. And so as far as domain, there are only two things I cannot do in mathematics at this point in your life and one that you'll never be able to do. One, the first one of which is divide by zero and the second one is take the square root of a negative number. Now taking the square root of a negative number like the square root of negative eight, you'll learn how to do next year. So we don't know yet, that's a yet problem, but division by zero is one we'll never learn. I don't know how to divide by zero, so you're never gonna really learn how to divide by zero unless you invent some method for doing so. Um, so basically we're looking for this to be zero and so what number makes that zero is what you're looking for. That number is the number we'd leave out our, our domain. So X cannot be whatever number makes that zero. No, zero, if I plug in zero, does not make zero. I get two over negative one, not a zero. I just need the denominator to be zero, and I'm going to leave you to think about it. All right, a baby born in the U.S. weighs 
3.295 kilograms according to the scale in the birthing room given that there are two 28.3 grams in one ounce. Convert this to pounds and ounces so you can tell grandparents how much baby weight the baby weight. All right, so 3.295 kilograms is 3,295 grams. We just have to multiply by 1,000 to change that. There are, if I want to convert to ounces, one ounce and 23.8 grams. So I'll take care of grams. Then I need to convert to pounds. And so. Um, that will be one one pound is sixteen ounces, and so using a calculator. Three two nine five divided by twenty three point excuse me twenty eight point three equals that number also divided by sixteen so three two nine five divided by twenty eight point three divided by 16, so 7.27963 pounds is our answer. All right, number, oh, lovely. Um, this one is a translation question. Let's start just by plotting the points. A is one comma one. B is negative one, negative one. So this was A. This is B. And C is four, negative one. And then use this function to transform. So we're going to change x into negative x and y is going to stay exactly the same. Um, so a prime will be negative 1, positive 1. b prime will be positive 1, negative 1. And c prime will be negative 4, negative 1. Make sure you translate that. Do the work on the paper. I'm going to leave that one to you. B is a little bit more tricky. Translate upward and right at total distance of five units. Um, so that it'll be parallel to line x plus five. Quite sure what they're trying to get at with that one. Um, upward and right, a total distance of five units total, like that, because that's not parallel, so that's a little confusing. It's parallel now. It won't be once I move it. I'm gonna think about that one. That one's a little tricky. See what you can do with that one. That one confuses me just a little bit. So if you can't figure out B, that's all right. Um, moving on, some news headlines from real observational studies determine at least one plausible lurking variable that could explain the cause effect. We aren't arguing about the link expressed in this headline. We're accepting that there is a, there is a relationship, but we don't think there's causation. So we want to figure out what might be actually the cause. 
and so the graveyard shift may be aptly named working nights will soon be listed as a likely cancer cause so um what might actually be the cancer so graveyard just means the working at night and so why would working at night cause cancer or something to think about what could be the actual lurking variable there um and that one's a little tough come use your best imagination on that daily meat diet tied to a higher chance of early death um it's probably a cholesterol thing a fat intake um, a lack of um very diet in your route specifically greens and vegetables eating meat all the time is not really good for you that kind of thing is here um doesn't mean it will cause death but it's the idea so that's that come up with a looking variable use your best judgment and i will see you guys later